I will be the first one <clears throat> to admit that godly mothers is what made this country great. I had the privilege of having a very, very godly mother who no doubt is watching from heaven. I had godly grandmothers and great-grandmothers and I am married to a godly woman. But what is a godly mother? What defines, what is the characteristic of a godly mother? A godly mother is one who loves the Lord, her God with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then passionately, consistently, and unrelentingly teaches her child to do the same. Being a mother is no doubt the hardest job in the world. There is no question about that. And being a godly mother is even harder. But Abraham Lincoln once said, no man is poor who has a godly mother. Billy Graham said, only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of character in her children. My mother used to wait for me when I got home from school every day and went over what I learned for the day. And if some of that didn't match up with the Bible, she would tell me and explain to me what the truth was. And I would go back to school and tell the teacher and start a big mess. <laughs> I'll never forget the day that the teachers introduced evolution to the classroom. And they were telling us that we came from apes. When I went home, my mother, without batting an eye, she said, son, you are Irish. Most of your ancestors swung by their necks, but never by their tails. <laughs> I told that to the teacher, and she didn't think that was funny at all. Those who think that a woman detained at home by her little family is doing nothing, think the reverse of what is true. Scarcely can the godly mother quit her home for a place of worship, but dream not that she is lost to the work of the church. Far from it, she is doing the best possible service for her Lord. Mothers, the godly training of your offspring is your first and most pressing duty, Charles Spurgeon. The mother's heart is the child's schoolroom. And almost always, what is told by the mother will come out of the mouth of the children. That can be scary too. In the absence of biblical conviction, moms will go the way of the culture. Sally Clarkson. In the absence of a loving home, children will go the way of, a cult, of the culture. And next to God, the mother's power for good is the strongest known on earth. Her smile, her encouragement may be an inspiring force. Her influence will reach on through time into eternity. Ellen White said that. We're going to look for a few minutes at the characteristics of a godly mother. And I pray that every mother in here and watching by TV or internet or listening by radio will take this to heart because if we're going to turn around anything in this nation until Jesus comes back to get us, it's going to be up to godly mothers to do this. A godly mother seeks biblical knowledge. Proverbs 15, 14, the heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feed on foolishness. The number one thing to seek knowledge, ladies, is to turn off the view. For God's sake, turn it off. I'm not going to get into that. I was forced to watch that for an hour in the doctor's office this week, and I'm still recovering from that. A God-fearing mom is intimately connected with God. She maintains a prayer and devotional life to keep a discerning heart. 
She is intentional about growing her knowledge of the truth by reading her Bible daily and committing scripture to memory. She prays to seek God's wisdom for every day. And I saw my mother do that every day with her Bible. A godly mother fears the Lord. The fear of the Lord, according to Psalms 111.10, is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. Deuteronomy 6.18 says, And you will do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you. And so to have the right understanding of godly parenting, and there's a big difference between parenting and godly parenting, a Christian mother recognizes that biblical motherhood isn't a popularity contest. Boy, you will not be popular if you raise your children like that. But it's the right thing to do and they will thank you one day. A godly mother trusts in God and I'm going to tell you what, you better trust in God today. Psalms 9:10 and those who know your name will put their trust in you for you Lord have not forsaken those who seek you. Her trust in God is most evident during the most trying and depleting seasons of her life. Take the widow of Zarephath, for example, in the Bible. She lives by faith and not by sight because you simply cannot live by sight anymore in these last days. You have got to live by faith if you are going to raise godly children. A godly mother cultivates a joyful spirit. Donna has to do that. <laughs> Donna has got to be the most cheerful, positive woman that I have ever met in my life. She balances me out. I'm not going to say how I am, but let me simply say this. If Donna ever makes a public statement that you're no good, you're going to hell. <laughs> you might as well start digging. That's how cheerful and positive this woman is. I'll leave it at that. For the list of who is no good afterwards that she's given me, I'll sell that to y'all, okay? All right. <laughs> Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Cultivate a joyful spirit. Your kids need to see that in you. They will imitate what you do. They will repeat what you say. And so it is very, very important that you show the right spirit before your children. A godly mother willingly does the work God has set before her. Psalms 31, as Mike read, uh, talks about what a, 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 I don't know how you describe it, but what an amazing woman that does all of the work that she does and, and takes care of her family at the same time. She doesn't wait for inspiration or motivation. She just gets up there and gets things done. I like that commercial where this man is laying, dying in the bed from the flu. Like most of us men do. And a head, now by the way, if you women ever get a head cold like we get, then you will understand what suffering is really all about. Well, I like that commercial where the man had a white dress shirt on and he said, look, honey, I did the ironing by myself. And when he turned around, there was a big burn of an iron right in the back. And the woman wiped her brow and got up out of the bed to take care of him. That's, <laughs> they willingly do the work that's set before them. God bless them for that. A godly mother keeps a pure heart. 1 Timothy 4:12. Be an example to the believers in word and conduct and in love and spirit and faith and in purity. To keep a pure heart. A God-fearing mother is mindful of everything that influences her thoughts, her actions, and her emotions. And she's aware of the things that influence her children as well. Moms, be a filter for your children. Not an enabler, but a filter for your children because the devil and this world wants your kids so bad 
they're willing to do anything to get them and you stand between the devil and your children and you filter the stuff that they're learning and they're seeing and you put a stop to it. A godly mother is content with what she has. Uh, now, uh, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, now godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, I've seen moms, particularly my mom, could stretch a dollar better than the Christian Children's Fund, where that dollar a month provided three meals a day and a college education for children overseas. My mother could do that. And she was always content with what she had, and that is so very important, not to grumble in front of your children. A godly mother builds up her house. Proverbs 14.1 says the wise woman builds her house but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. Moms, a lot of times it's up to you to hold things together. And it's true what Mike said. Moms are so very often the glue that holds the family together. And that includes the home as well. Drawing wisdom and guidance from the Bible, a Christian mother will partner with God and her husband to build a solid foundation for their home. And as one, she and her husband lead the family uh, in worship, prayer, reading of the Bible. They engage their children in discussions and challenges of these things in light of the scripture and teach their children about what's going on in the world and what the Bible has to say about it. Educate your children. Build up your home and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the way to handle those situations. Another characteristic of a godly mother is a godly mother is a wise steward of her home and her time and her resources. Most mothers would like to ask this question. Just what is spare time? What is spare time? That, that's a trick question, by the way, because there is no spare time. And, it, 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 and, and men, you need to appreciate what the women have to deal with, and you need to help them. And, and let them have some time, you know? They need a little sanity, too. But a godly woman takes responsibility for her resources and has a plan for the proper management of her home and her time and she relies on God and removes distractions out of her life. And, and believe me, there are plenty of distractions to keep moms busy and not paying attention to their family and it's up to them to shove those things out of the way. A godly mother is also a disciple maker. My mother led me to the Lord on a Saturday night in June of 1969. I will never forget it. She sat on the edge of the bed with the Bible and talked to me about that and led me to the Lord right then and there. And I've never been the same since. And my mother's prayed for me to the day she died out long after that. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Making a disciple is teaching people about Jesus, teaching people about godly concepts, and most of it is learned on the knees of your mama. Moms, teach your children about Jesus. Just like Hannah who raised her son Samuel to live a life of service to God, a Christian mother disciples her children and trains them in the way they should go. She does this best by inviting her children to take part in the daily experience of prayer and communing with God and to raise your children to delight in God's word by teaching scripture to little kids, toddlers, teenagers, and even babies. Read it to them. You would be surprised at what will sink in. The other day when little AJ raised her hand, we were all like, oh, here it comes. But what came out of that child's mouth was absolutely amazing. You know why? Because she listened. She heard what was said. It won't return void, man. Teach your children. We can all breathe better now. My kids used to do that. Scare me to death. Here it comes. But they did all right. Teach the children. All right. 
A godly mother cheerfully serves her family as if she is serving God because she is. Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to man. Philippians 2.14, Do all things without complaining and disputing. A mother is a home missionary. You are. And most of the time, you're a missionary to the heathen. You got you to make a difference with them little heathens that you got. There's a daycare somewhere around here called Teaching Little Angels. I said they need to have one called Teaching Little Heathens. As a home missionary, godly mom recognizes she has been appointed by Christ to serve him as a missionary in her own home. That's true. That's true. She realizes ministry doesn't happen always in the mission field and in the church. It happens daily in the seemingly and mundane ordinary moments that unfold between the four walls of her home. Her service to God is an act of wholehearted praise and worship. That is so true. Another thing that a godly woman needs to do or a godly mother needs to do because children are watching is that they need to live with unswerving integrity. Psalms 24, 3 through 5, Who may ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. A God-fearing mom lives with integrity. Her identity is secure in Christ and he empowers her to trust in his promises while raising her children in an ungodly world. And that's exactly what we have right now. In seeking to follow the, the Lord's will in everything, she finds peace, strength, and safety in Christ no matter how difficult her struggles may be. Another thing that is so important, probably more important than anything else, moms, is a godly mother prays for her children. I would be in prison or dead right now if my mother had not prayed for me every day. That's the truth. Because I, I had an absolutely crazy streak in me coming up. I know that's hard to fathom that, but nonetheless. I, never mind, I'll leave that alone. I don't know if the statutes run out or not. But a godly mother prays for her children. The Bible says in Colossians 4, 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. And a praying mother intercedes for her children every day. And moms, you know you need to do it every day. Her prayers protect her children from being deceived by the lies of the world. She prays for their salvation. She asks God to give them teachable hearts so that they may be ready to receive and accept the blessings of engaging and trusting in God's word. Pray for your children to know Jesus. That is the most important thing. And second only to that is a godly mother trains her children in the way they should go. Don't drop them off at church. Go with them. Sit down with your child. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. They may depart from it for a while. But if you taught them right, they will come back around to it. The Bible promises that. In Proverbs 22, a God-fearing mother helps her children discover God's will, purpose, and path for their lives. You don't put the kid out there and go, you choose. Does anybody know what the kid will choose if you shove them out in the world and tell them to choose? Anybody got any idea? You really don't want to know what they'll pick. It's up to you to make those decisions until that child is old enough to do so and even then interfere all you can. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with being a meddling mother if it's for the, for the sake of the gospel. You go right on and meddle all you want. When, you, when your kids come to me for counseling, I'll say, listen to your mama. I'm not going to fuss at the mom and tell her to butt out. We need meddling mother. We need meddling grandmothers. I ain't going to turn on them this morning. 
Moms help the kids discover their God-given gifts and talents and how they may best use them to bless others and glorify God. And through her example, she teaches her children how to pray, live, work, and serve and worship. My mother always told me, use your talents for God or you'll lose them. And she gave me examples of people that refused to use their gifts and talents for God and how they did lose them. And I always remembered those things that she told me as a child. Now here's something that is foreign to me. But moms, do the best you can. A godly mother practices patience and kindness. That's the ultimate in patience right there. And kindness behind me. My goodness. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love suffers long. And it's kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. She shows empathy and understanding for her children. No matter what, Donna will have a reason to make it right. To say, well, maybe we can do this. Maybe this is what's going on. Maybe that is what's going on. And she's usually right. Her goal is to reflect the character of Christ in her words and actions. And she realizes this is not possible without his help. That's the kind of mother that God would have each of you to be. <clears throat> A godly mother lives with Christ-like selflessness. Romans 12:10, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. A God-fearing mother finds joy in serving and loving others as Jesus did. She volunteers her time for a good cause and makes herself available for friends, family, and strangers. She supports charities and ministries through time, service, and donations. We got a lot of moms that's doing that here now, and I thank God for that. I thank God for that. And instead of judging others, she puts herself in their shoes and tries to understand what they're going through. And that is a real gift from God to do that. Only got a couple more left and we'll, we'll be done. But a godly mother partners with God in raising and training her children. Isaiah 54, 13. Did I say Isaiah? <laughs> Dave had lots of cold medicine last night. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah 54, 13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. There is nothing you could tell your kids that's greater than telling them about Jesus. As David once wrote in Psalms 127, 3, children are heritage from the Lord. A Christian mom seeks and welcomes God's help into her home and with God's guidance, she assumes her solemn responsibility of loving, cherishing, and teaching her children. And then a godly mother seeks godly counsel. I would say to any of the younger mothers here, look around at the older mothers who are grandmothers now, and see which of them is still sane and seek them out for advice of how they kept their sanity. They have a lot to offer and a lot to tell you about child rearing. And hey folks, let me tell you something. What they tell you is not old fogey, dinosaur, old fashioned junk. It worked then and it'll work now. A godly mother seeks godly counsel Proverbs 19, 20, listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel is what will stand. She seeks counsel and guidance from God-fearing mentors who encourage her and keep her accountable. That's the one thing we all need is accountability to one another and to the Lord while we're doing this. But godly moms seek godly counsel. And finally, the legacy of a godly mother. The greatest biblical role of a mother is that of a disciple maker. 
she solemnly takes on her role in the Great Commission by pointing her children to God. Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, as we'd read earlier. And a Christian mother is God's chosen home missionary, as I said. She is her children's first window into the life and the character of Christ. In the mundane moments, a godly mother who is raising her children for Christ is planting seeds of gospel truth in their hearts. There's a meme on Facebook about planting seeds and it shows a tree growing up through a boulder half the size of this building right here and it split it right in half and they said there's a lot of power in planting seeds. The Holy Spirit will work alongside a godly mother to transform her children's heart and prepare them for future their future life. And in conclusion, when a godly mother's work is done humbly and for the Lord, God will be made real in the lives of her children. The ungodly world that is drawn by passing phases and uh, An outward beauty will never see or understand the immortal beauty of the influence of a godly mother. When mothers partner with God, their children will be fit not only for life in an ungodly world, but also for a future in heaven. And as my mother always told me, and the older I get, the truer these words are. And ladies, listen carefully. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Indeed, that is true. It is up to you and it's up to dads too, but we're talking to moms today. Be the godly influence that the Lord has spoken to you about being. Live for the Lord in front of your children and show them the way that the Lord would have you live in front of your children. It is so very important because eventually your children will grow up to be just like